Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the Coral Distributed Hash Table, which I'm actually very much in, I'm in knee deep right now, but this is kind of high level for me and might be kind of too low level for you, so bear with me. Um, right now, what you have in front of you is kind of like a network topology. So each one of these nodes represents, um, or each one of these circles represents a node in our lookup system. And Coral is really great because it's a super fast lookup system. And as you'll see, it kind of has some special features that uh, most distributed hash tables don't have. So what is a distributed hash table? It's just like a hash table, except it's distributed and each node corresponds to a key. So a node's address um, will hash every time a key is hash, it'll go corresponding to a node's address. So let's say, for example, we have key 100, whosoever node's address is closest to 100, that'll correspond to that key. So let's walk through an example really quick. So, okay, let's say this uh, node, Naomi, knows about a really cool video. She hashes that URL to the value 100. Now what's gonna happen? So Naomi calls put on the whole coral system and in a series of RPCs to intermediate nodes, she's gonna hop not directly to the node that corresponds with 100, but to a couple of intermediate nodes. And you'll see why that's really important later. So keep that in mind. Um, eventually, she'll wind up at David, little green David, and she'll store um, her node's address at David. And now um, David is storing Naomi's address. So then um, Jacques hears about this really cool video that's stored um, somewhere in this coral DHT, and he says, I want to get uh, 100. And as he's querying the DHT, he's also going to be hopping through intermediate nodes until he gets to David. David lets him know it's on Naomi's node, and he gets Naomi's node address. Now, once he queries Naomi, gets Naomi's node address, he's going to call and get the data. So now Jack is now storing the same video that Naomi has. So Jack has a choice. He can either be selfish, keep this video for himself, just chill out, do whatever, or he can call a put, just like Naomi did initially. And as soon as Jack calls this put, he's actually gonna, so he's gonna do the intermediate node thing again. He's going through the intermediate nodes. And when he gets to David, David says, I'm full. I can't store any more data under this key. So he backtracks, because he was saving his nodes like Naomi did, and he puts his data in this middle node that says data stored on Jacques. And that's huge, because what we're doing now is we're spreading out all of these, all these keys throughout the system. It's called sloppy hashing, and it's so important. So now there's two nodes that have this key. And when Eli calls get, he's going to run into Jacques' node, and he's going to then query Jacques instead of Naomi. So we're avoiding server, origin server overload, and this is huge. So this was a huge revelation in the DHT community, and we're using it now for libp2p instead of uh, our original Kademlia, what we're going to, instead of the original Kademlia DHT, and it's going to enable much faster lookups. Um, so that's what we're doing this summer, and yeah, any questions? <laughs> Sorry, that was super speedy. <laughs> cool, all right. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>